agent, amen? I just want to recognize something just to get started here this evening is that you're watching the, those who came up here and did music for us tonight, um, that three of them were here all day working on a drama and, and rehearsed endlessly to the point uh, just before they came in here and they just put together a set of music right now, that little box that Brandon was sitting on was the first time he's ever sat on that in his life. <laughs> My point is to say that sometimes to accomplish the things that God calls us to, we got to go way out there beyond what is pleasant and push through to what is unpleasant. It's called labor. It's labor for the Lord and it accomplishes great things. And so we push through those things in order that there's a, there's a reward much like uh, childbirth, right? There's labor pains and then there's, it gives way to a baby of great joy. And so when I see them here uh, laboring through this set of music just to try to put something together for this service, and obviously there's no drum kit behind us, and, and they were looking for ways to plug into the system because it's all been set up for this drama that, that's in here that's going to uh, begin tomorrow evening. You know, you realize the amount of effort that really goes out in what it is to push through something, to really push through something. And I'll tell you, um, I really appreciate the fact, the effort that gets put forth. Sometimes we don't realize, though, what the, God, what the Lord really wants to do in our life that requires us to press through when he calls us to realize that we have to tap into something that we cannot do on our own that requires him to show up. Amen? Amen. Well, welcome. I'm glad that you're here this evening. Uh, we obviously are doing something uh, by way of a drama. As you can see the stuff behind me, and you see that there's nothing up on the screens uh, behind me as well. Everything has been set and ready for this drama. We are talking about uh, the I Am's of Jesus. And last week I talked about um, I Am the Bread of Life is what Jesus said. We knew, we knew that that was a picture that was uh, very important. It was a, something that the people understood very clearly is that bread is a staple for survival, barley loaves. And so we were talking about how God, uh, how significant the title I Am, the picture of that and how it resonated with the ears that heard it. Last week we, uh, we heard about Exodus chapter 3, uh, in exchange with God and Moses, thir verse 13 and 14, Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am I am has sent me to you. Very significant words and powerful words, meaning the one, the deliverer. And so as we took a look at the bread of, of life, and then tonight we're going to take a look at uh, Jesus being the light of the world, and, and take a look into the significance of the character of Jesus here on planet Earth, um, First, or John chapter 1, verse 1 through 14 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. The, through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made, and in him it was life. And that life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness of the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came into that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all that did receive him, all who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God, children not born of a natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen 
his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The light shined in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Very big, big, big words. Light always displaces darkness. It always displaces darkness. And in this world, it's received sometimes well and it's sometimes not received very well at all. In John chapter 8, verse 12 says this, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I want to take a look at something. Verse, down in verse 20, it says this. It says, he spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. He was standing close to a huge menorah at the temple, declaring himself to be the light of the world. And it's a significant thing. It's a major part of this festival of, um, that lighting of these huge lamps was a big part. In the city of Jerusalem, they had these four huge menorahs that lit up the entire feast. And if you can imagine, we don't understand that very well because we don't rely on some kind of a light like that because everything we deal with has, we have street lights, we have lights in our homes, we have lights outside our homes. We we're accustomed to having lights. But these lights were bright and they, they were an amazing sight for people that were not accustomed to what we know as normal here. The menorahs were darkened at the time that Jesus spoke because it was in the daytime. But it was a great about that one two one two am i alive again amen praise god well this is going to be quite the evening amen well i'll tell you what there's a lot to be said when you have this kind of resistance amen well i'm going to tell you what so those menorahs they were these big lights giant lights and i you know what i i seen something on a construction site that's really cool that I seen Austin Tyler has it on the highway. They did some paving at night. And I seen these big round ball things that were, they were lights, but they illuminated with a glow that went outward that wasn't shining stuff right in your eyes. Amen? So it was very powerful to the workers. They could see almost like daytime light at nighttime. So you imagine the people living in that period of time, how powerful that would have been. You know, how interesting it would have been to have a celebration at night and be out there in the lights, amen? So, something happened just before this scene plays out, where Jesus comes in, and you understand, for him to say the word I am, and then the light of the world. I am the light of the world. That's big stuff. But something happened just prior to that. And it was a scene that uh, unfolded that everybody was looking at. And it's an amazing one. Because Jesus was saying to, the, to this crowd of people that he was the light of the world. And he had this ability to shine a light right into your life. Right? shine right into the recesses of what was going on. And that's exactly what happened just prior to this announcement. It's found um, in John chapter 8, verse 1 and following says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and at dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. 
the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman is caught in adultery and the law has commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question to trap him in order that to have basis to accuse him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, guess what? He shined the light into their hearts. Amen? Listen to what he did. He says, he straightened up and he said to them, let anyone without sin cast the first stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. And Dave, you're right. The oldest first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. I think that's amazing. Some of the old guys realize our gig's up. He's speaking to us. Amen? In other words, there's issues in our life, and he's looking right at it. You ever, you ever stand at a place that you're guilty of something, and you know that somebody knows it? Amen? I, I, one person? Did you hear what I said? You ever been guilty of something? And somebody's looking you dead in the eyes. And you know that they know. Amen? You hear what I'm saying. So those people there, the older guys, they got it. They were the first one to fold their hand and say, oh, gig's up. Let's get out of here. Or he says something else. Jesus straightened up. And he asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and leave your life of sin. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, here you go. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So you have this picture you have a bunch of posers who are religious people trying to point the finger at somebody who's guilty as charged. That's no secret. The issue is what's going on in their own lives. And Jesus, he paints a pretty clear picture that he's not there to condemn her. What was happening is what happens with a lot of religious people in entrapment. And a lot of times religious people like to make themselves look better at the expense of somebody else. The reality of it is that's not the intention of the gospel. The intention of the gospel is that we would receive the grace of God because of what Jesus paid for on the cross. Amen? Now when I, I tell you that and, and just give it to you, you're getting it right out of the context of Scripture. You see Jesus put on the spot, his response shines a light right into the hearts of those who have no intention to repent. And then the woman that's there that's expecting a punishment that costs her her life receives grace and mercy. Well, we know the scripture that says, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we hang our hats on that. We were just talking, to Pastor Brandon was in here, and he was talking about, you know, the gospel of today is preached, uh, and it's all about God's love, and it doesn't have anything to do with repentance. There's a big problem with that, because that's not what Jesus did, is it? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who, whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And to save the world through him sounds like this. Go away and leave your life of sin. Are you with me? It doesn't say, he doesn't go, go away and act like you don't have any sense. Go away and do whatever you want in your time frame and do things your way. No quite different than that. It's in lieu of the grace and mercy, 
in lieu of the motivation of God to restore and redeem your life, in lieu of the reality that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The one that walks with me will never walk in darkness again. Hello. That's quite a different picture, isn't it? Yeah. When you think about the scripture that talks about, you know, the way we used to walk, when we followed the prince of the air, the adversary of God, all the things we were involved in, that's when we were in the dark. Amen? So when you're in the light, you ought to do something different. You ought to be aware of something different. We ought to be able to see the error of our ways. One of the things I used to say all the time, and I believe it from the bottom of my heart, I believe the Lord gave me it, it was insightful then and it is now, is the truths of Scripture. When you got a truth of Scripture that's hammered down and you hear it, you got to read it, know it, believe it, and live it. Amen? Read it, know it, believe it, and live it. It means that I'm going to own this completely in lieu of I'm not in darkness no more. I once walked in ignorance, and now I'm not walking in ignorance. Amen? I'm not, I once walked in darkness, but now I walk in light. I once walked in bondage, but now I'm free. I once walked in hopelessness, but now I have hope. Amen? He said if they would follow him, he would bring his light of life into their lives. Amen? Light of life, darkness of death, light of life, transforming them, restoring them with his power, illumination, illumination. So we have the ability. I'm going to tell you, we can act ignorant. I can come down on the floor now. I don't have to worry about hooking myself on my wire. Amen. So. If you can imagine, we can deny what we have seen, right? We can deny it. We pretend like we don't know. So we read the scriptures, we read them, and we can pretend like we didn't know anything about them. Or we can make it our goal that we would know them, amen? And we better believe them, right? Right? then we better live them. So if we're going to walk in light, I'm going to recognize what I see. I'm going to acknowledge it before God because he already sees the recesses of my heart. I'm going to acknowledge it before him. And then I'm going to live it. And he says this, if you walk with me, you will never walk in darkness again. Amen? How often do you walk in darkness if you walk with him? Never. There's a monkey wrench in our spokes, folks, because there's some folks that walk in darkness. We maybe turn the light off on a situation here and there. We turn the dimmer switch down. Is that it? The truth of it is, when I, I was watching these people here laboring and Brandon, he, Pastor Brandon brings them back in, and, and they, they don't realize they're about to get bamboozled because he's going to tell them you need to run through it again one more time. Well, that's not a five-minute excursion. You hear what I'm telling you? And then he explained that. He explained it as in, you know, this is when what was fun turns to labor, but it's going to bring forth the prize, right? The baby comes after the labor, Amen. And it was such a great analogy because you understand what he's speaking about is what illumination does to a life here on planet Earth. We realize it isn't about finding my lazy boy chair in the remote. It isn't about finding the easiest way out of everything that there is because I don't want to do it. It's not about shrinking back into darkness because the devil comes calling. And if you don't believe all of hell's fury has been unleashed on us in here with everything that was going goofy in this place, there's a spiritual battle going on, folks. 
And the reality is that we push through it, we press through it, because why? Because we know we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We're not ignorant that there's a battle going on. We're not ignorant of the fact that we have to push through. After you've done everything to stand, you must stand firm. We're in a battle. And so as we begin to let this soak in, Jesus is speaking to people who they were in darkness all the time. When the sun went down at nighttime, it was pitch black unless they walked around with a lantern or a candle. You hear what I'm saying? They didn't know what we know. I mean, if I look right out the front doors, I see lights. It's all the businesses across the street. There's street lights. There's illumination. There's, a, there's never is it pitch black. It was pitch black for them. And he was communicating, if you walk with me, you'll never walk like that again. Spiritually. He's making a claim that's giant because he has the I am in front of it. And they were having a hard time with that. And you know why people have a real hard time with this Jesus? It's because he has a habit of shining that light right into the recesses of our hearts. And that tells the truth. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's get past the, the adolescent or childish things that we do as we, we don't want them to shine the light because we're convicted and, and we don't want anybody to see that. Let's get past that and say, okay, I've been down that road far enough and got knocked around far enough that I'm not adolescent anymore, and now I want to be illuminated. Now I want him to show me the error of my ways, and I want to see the direction of his ways. Amen? We come to a different place. We agree with him about, I'm stumbling around, and I'm wondering why I'm stumbling around. Right? So I'm stumbling around because I'm trying to navigate through something probably in a place I need not be, things I shouldn't be involved in. He shines the light on it and says, what are you doing over there? you got no business over there. Get over here. You've wandered off into darkness. So we start to really start to nurture this walk with the Lord. We start making conscious decisions to stay in the light. Amen? To walk in the light. To make sure that what's going into my eardrums is not steering me away into darkness. So I'm walking in the light and I'm making this conscious decision. And the outcome of that is an amazing thing. God challenges our heart to focus on that light in the things that it illuminates in our life. Let me just tell you something. It illuminates it first for us. When God shines that light into our life, we're the first ones to see what he's showing us. Amen? Let me tell you else, who else is observing that, this world. Hello. Hello this world. So he shines the light. We're just moving along and we want to ignore it. We don't pretend like I don't see it. Kind of like Drew when there's flashing lights behind his car. He pretends there's nothing back there. Nothing to see here. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. And what happens? We ignore it, but somebody else sees it, Right? Somebody who's watching our lives because why? We're supposed to be something more than somebody that's walking in illumination and, and ignoring it? Why we're walking right toward these steps and make no adjustments. I'm going to fall down. The whole concept is that you lift your feet and go up the steps, right? Because the illumination gave me the ability to walk up them steps. In pitch black, I might trip and fall, Amen. So we have hope in Christ. We have the ability to walk and not stumble in darkness. We don't have to be tied up in bondage because his word illuminates for us the freedom. We're not hopeless anymore because we have hope. He is the light of life. Listen to Luke chapter 8. Verse 16 and following says this. No one lights a lamp and hides it 
in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought into the open. Therefore, listen to this, therefore consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. And whoever does not have, even what they listen, think they have, will be taken from them. Boy, I'll tell you what, if that doesn't sober us up right here and right now. The lamp, we're supposed to be an illumination of him, Jesus, amen? If we walk with him, we'll never walk in darkness again. But some of us want to hide our lamp under the bed <laughs> or under in a clay jar. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Some of us want to, want to do that. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't sound like a good idea under the bed. You'll light the thing on fire. That's what he says. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. In other words, let's listen with ears to perceive. We have no, no reason to walk in darkness. All we have to do is to walk with him. Amen? So if we walk with him, we won't stumble around in darkness. But let me, here's, here's the problem in this whole thing. We have to make a conscious decision to say, when he illuminates, I say, yes, Lord. I make the adjustment. If you're walking through this place, boy, watching the props get moved around on the stage and stuff, those guys are running around in darkness. I see there's these little things on the steps there, and they, they reflect light. So when the lights go out, they can see a little glow that gives them an ability to not stumble up them stairs. Amen? Let me ask you a question. Why do you think they put those on there? This team, why do you think those are on there? What what gave it? What's that? So they don't fall. Well, there's a winner, ain't it? Because somebody fell before, don't you think? Long time ago, when they didn't have those, and they did a drama, and there were steps, and people come running in there, and they hit them steps, and the next thing you know, all you hear is, ooh! And there's someone laying on the ground. So they have to create a way to have an illumination to see something that could befall them. And so when you think in terms of us, we're supposed to be this illumination that the world would see that we, as that light is illuminating, they see us. And it's not us they're looking at. It's the Jesus in us that they see. So what happens if we're living a life that's less than what it's supposed to be? We want to get it underneath the clay jar or under the bed. We want to stay out of sight. So maybe, maybe we're afraid because we don't want to, we see what the Lord has shown us and we don't want to see it. Maybe it's painful. Maybe I don't want to deal with it. Maybe I don't believe I can deal with it. But he says, if you walk with me, listen, you won't stumble around in darkness. You'll never walk in darkness again. So what's he saying? If you walk with me. Did you hear that? If you walk with me. In other words, it's not like if you get saved under a modern gospel of just Jesus loves you and you, you ask him into your heart and then, and then as a result of that, all the blessings of all God's creation, they spill out on you like a waterfall. It's just like cotton candy. Instead of, how about this, that there's a God in heaven who's a just God. And because he loves us and doesn't want us to pay the penalty of our own sin, he, he made a way for us to be able to agree with him. He showed us, he showed us the error of our way. And when we see it, when that illumination hits us, we can say, yes, Lord, I see that. I agree with you, and now I make an adjustment, and I walk with you. 
And as a result of making that adjustment, those who are watching me are going to say, I want to walk like you're walking. I've never seen nobody do that before. So well, I don't want anybody to have to see that. I'm, I'm ashamed. Not a good place to be. Because you understand, the scripture says, who has will be given more. You know, when we walk with him on this journey, and whoever does not have even what they think they have, you know, it's a scripture. You want to save this life, you'll lose it. And if you'll lose this life for him and the sake of the gospel, you'll find it. We're living in a delusion outside of Christ. You're stumbling around in the dark and wondering what's going on. And there's a world out there that we're trying to reach for Jesus. Amen? Another text that communicates this same principle is Matthew chapter 5. Verse 14 and 15 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. So you understand this picture of the city on a hill, kind of a concept, a stand, a light that's lit, that's up high, by way of design so that everybody has the opportunity to benefit with that. So how significant do you think it is for us to comprehend what God wants to do in our lives by illuminating our path as we walk this journey with him. And he gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to illuminate our steps so we could say, you know what, this is not who I am anymore. And then when the world comes in and they want to entice you into who you used to be, you have a proclamation to say, listen, you know what, I used to walk that way. That's when I was in darkness. I'm not in darkness anymore. I'm walking a different journey, and you know what it is? You can heckle me, and I'm going to pray for you because I walked in your shoes, but you haven't been in mine. And the reason I know that is because, you know what, I'm on this journey, and I'm walking alongside the Lord, and it's not a popular place to be because when I'm walking it, when I'm on this journey and I'm walking it with him, he shows me things I have to deal with. So as I see them and I deal with them, I begin to be a guide for somebody else as my light is on a stand and it's illuminated for those who are looking. And they see, listen, oh, so I feel, I feel like an idiot. You know, I feel like an idiot. I'm in front of these people. They're looking at me and I stand corrected before God. Praise God. Because they're looking for directions. They've seen you. You got off the wrong ramp. You got right back on, followed the clover around, and got going like you got some sense right back where you need to be. And you come before the Lord and you say, God, I made a, I made a mistake here. And the scripture says we, we confess our sin. He's faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I would be right there in front of the person that's the person that says, you're a hypocrite. And I'd say, praise God for Jesus. Because the illumination of his word has given me the ability to come right back around and get moving in the right direction. It tells me that I'm not the person I used to be. I'm a new creature in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. And I'm on, on a journey. And the only way I can do the right thing is to walk with him. And you know what? He keeps moving. And I must walk with him. So that means getting distracted. That's a problem, isn't it? Amen? Getting distracted will take you into a place you don't belong. It's one of them off-ramps, if you will. And what God's really wanting to communicate to our hearts is to say, listen, this is a done deal. Jesus, the great I am, he is the light of the world. And in him there is no darkness, no darkness at all. And as a result of that, you with great confidence can walk with him. And he will illuminate your steps. But I'm going to promise you this. You're going to see stuff you don't want to see. Because he's going to illuminate the very recesses of your heart. And then he's going to want you to deal with it. Amen? Are you hearing me? 
And so if you think, if you think that, well, this whole church thing is, you know, God's going to show me these things, and then I go away and I feel bad because all I ever see is how far short I fall. And I'd say, praise God that you see that because that's why Jesus came and died on a cross for us. We all fall, fall short of the glory of God. Amen? He died for us for that very reason. But he says, listen, you were lost. You were dead in your transgressions and sins without hope. But God, with his great mercy, right, he sent Jesus to do what we could not do. So we were lost. We were without hope. Now we're found, and we have hope in Christ. And then he says, okay, you know that you were hopeless. You know you were, you were spinning out of control, and there was no hope at all. There was nothing in sight for you. And then by God's great mercy, he shined a light into your life. And you want to know if you've ever asked the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to save you, you know what he did? He shined a light into your life that you could see that for the first time. So what's the question that's most obvious? What are you doing with that light? Scripture says he is the light of life. The light of life. The Bible says we were dead in our transgressions and sins. We walked in darkness, but now we're in light. So by an act of our will, in our conscious effort, we walk with him. And you know what that means? It means I'm going to be a student of the word. It means I'm going to, when the light of the scriptures hit my life and, and I see something that's in total contrast, I'm going to take action immediately. Say, yes, Lord, I see it. Because somebody's life might depend on it. Somebody's looking at us. We're that light, whether you understand it or not. If you've asked the Lord Jesus to save you, you're a light that shines out. That's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to let our deeds be seen and glorify our Father in heaven. Amen? It becomes something that's like a... It's like a, a bug getting attracted to a light. And people of the world comes to us when it's authentic. So it's up to us. It's up to you. It's up to me. That we'd understand who this Jesus really is, this light of the world, the light of life. And that we so desperately need him not only not only that he showed us the error of our way, but now he shows us how to walk in his light in order that that light of life is an illumination that leads other ones right to the foot of the cross through our lives. And so we have a choice. We can say, I can be, I can be like what we heard in Luke where somebody puts a clay pot over it or puts it under their bed. And the scripture says, Consider what you hear. Consider it. In other words, act like you've got some sense. There's somebody's life that God is allowing us to have an influence on because we just allow him to illuminate us as we travel along on this journey. So where are you tonight? Are you at a place where you say, you know what, um, that light, I, it shines into my life and I'm just... I don't want to see what, he, what the Lord's showing me. Well, you know what happens when I walk around in dark, darkness in my house? I usually end up with a toenail that's bruised or breaking off and, uh, and or I'm laying on the ground. Amen? Because it's not a good place to be. But when I'm illuminated, guess what happens? I don't stumble. And I think for us tonight to really consider what does the Lord want to do in your life? First of all, have you ever... Have you ever had the light of life shine into your life? Have you ever asked Jesus as an individual to redeem you? To say, I want that, the I am, to shine his light into my life and that I would receive that and then I would walk with him on my journey. Amen? But if you've done that and you find yourself here tonight and you're saying, you know what, I see a lot of illumination and what I do is I turn away and I just... Close my eyes. You know, it's amazing what my wife does in the morning. She turned the light on. She, she'll say, I'm going to turn the light on. And this, the ceiling light, I think it's, it's like used for torture in other cultures. 
And so the first thing that I do is this, right over my eyes, just for a second, you know, so I could get adjusted. Boy, I think we do that. Maybe we're doing that here tonight. And we don't want that light to shine into our lives. We don't want to admit what we see. We don't want to do anything about it. If that's you, I, I would say, as it does in Luke, I'd say consider what you hear. The opportunity is right now. Counselors, have you come forward? The opportunity is right now to respond and say, Lord, I want to walk in that light. I want to walk in that light. I want to receive everything that you want my life to be as I find my way walking with you. As the music plays, would you come? Fruits of his labor falling right here on the ground. His work is almost over, pretty soon he'll all be right. Shackled to his fears and his doubts. The pain that he lives in is almost more than living. Would you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for another day. I thank you for the fact that you love us like you do, but also that you illuminate our lives. You give us the opportunity to respond to you. And I pray as we go from this place, God, that we would consider what you reveal to us in and through your word. And God, that it would be something that we would see, that we would read it, we would know it, we would believe it, and we would live it. To you be the glory, we ask. In Christ's name, amen. You are dismissed.